This is the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. A station that pays. Fresh from the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show, and folks, guess who's in the building? He was born and raised in Waco, Texas. He graduated from Waco University High School. He went to the University of Baylor, and he also served as the executive director of Baylor B Association, the school's 700 member organization of former letter winners. And he was selected in the first round, 12th overall of the 1982 NFL draft by the six time world champs, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ladies, and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome, let's welcome, running back, number 34, Walter Amber Combi. Welcome, 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 brother Walter, to the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. How you doing? Hey, man, I'm doing great, man. I appreciate the opportunity to be on your podcast. It's not a problem, not a problem. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, was you a Steeler fan growing up? You know what, man? I grew up in Waco, Texas, and uh, I, to be quite honest with you, man, my mom, was a was a huge football fan, but she was a Dallas Cowboys fan. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Okay. My mom was a Cowboys fan, and so I watched all the Cowboys, and I I fell in love with the uh, with Bob Hayes and Roger Staubach, uh, you know, Calvin Hill, all those great players uh, that they had on the team back in the '70s, and and so. Um, when the Steelers began facing the Cowboys in the Super Bowls, that's when all of a sudden I realized, you know, man, the, uh, the Steelers are a better team because they would beat the Cowboys. <laughs> so I, would tell, I had this little love inside my heart for the Steelers, but I couldn't tell my mom. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, uh, when I got drafted by the Steelers, you know, my mom, was like the most disappointed woman in the world. And she, she said, why, is there any way you can call the Rooney family and the coach and tell them that you want to play for the Cowboys? I said, Mom, they don't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> but Reggie, she came along, she came along, and uh, after my rookie season, uh, she became one of the biggest Steelers fans in the whole world, and she and, and she was all Steelers, man. She dropped in Cowboys like they were hotcakes. 
<laughs> Drop the hip. Well, that's what I'm talking about. You know, Dwayne Wood just said his father was a, he's from Texas, and his father was a Dallas fan. So he said, you know, I got to roll with my dad. But he said, when, when I got drafted to the Steelers, he said, I, I saw the light. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, now let me ask you this. What was the the trans the transition that you had to make, man, to to from college level to the pro level? I think the first thing that uh, I realized uh, when I first got to Pittsburgh is is how how much talented everybody on the team was, and I you know in college, if you know, if you look back up a little bit, go from high school to college, you might have a few guys in high school that are decent, but maybe one two. In college, you might have five or six guys on the team that are that could possibly play at the next level. But at the pros, man, I mean, when I got to the Steelers and I saw how talented everybody was, I mean, everybody from 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 the guard tackles to the wide receivers, everybody was special. They had a special, unique physical ability wow. that made them made them eligible to be at that level. That's the that's the first thing I noticed when I got there is how good everybody was, how fast those linebackers were. And so, yeah, it was no joke, man. I, I You know, it makes you automatically step up your game. Oh, wow, that's what I'm talking about. That That's great, man. Now, let me ask you this. Who was one of your favorite players of all times as a Pittsburgh Steeler? Oh, man, that's a, that's a tough one right there because – I know it's a lot of them. You know, I, was, I was a – you know, you talking about a Steeler player or any player? Any player that's over all time Pittsburgh. All time Pittsburgh probably was uh, I would say Lynn Swan, and uh, I was fortunate enough because he, you know, he made a, a, a bunch of acrobatic catches back back in the day. Right. And you know, he was a good looking guy, smooth. You know, and so when I got there and I met him, it was like it was like meeting a legend. Help. When I got there, Reggie, all of those guys were legends. And so, but Lynn uh, and I became fast friends. And, and, of course, when I got to know Franco, my backfield mate, uh, it was, uh, you know, I, I learned to love him and appreciate him for his ability. You know, he was a big running back. And um, and so that was really just a, a, for a kid growing up in Texas to be able to play with those guys who used to be up on my Cowboys, you know, <laughs> um, that was really like a dream come true. That's wonderful, man. That's wonderful. All right, now, under Chuck Noah, Coach Chuck Noah, how was he as a coach and you being under him as a player? Well, you know, Chuck was uh, – everybody knew that Chuck was a great coach. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, he was a man who was very – he didn't get close to his players. I'm sure you've heard that. Right. You know, he he was a guy who was a, who was a, not aloof. He just didn't believe in getting close to players, and you know, it was always a little difficult for him because with you know to get close to kids, and and then all of a sudden you got to cut them or let them go. He just chose to to keep his distance. But what I respected about him is the you, you know he taught football. He taught the game of football, which. Um, Many guys don't don't really know. You know, you play because you got a lot of athletic ability. But once I got to the league and I started learning the game of football, and I credit that to Chuck, uh, I, I really became a better player. Right. Okay. Now, when you're in that backfield and you you thinking you're going to get the ball, when you know you're going to get the ball when they call your play. When you running that ball, what is in your mind? What are you thinking about? Because I know, man, it's very physical, and you're gonna get hit hard. How does that feel, and what are you thinking at that time? Well, I mean, if most players are gonna get it. You know, once you get on that football field, you turn into a different kind of person. I mean, it's about it's about winning the battle, and so um, I get in a real competitive uh, frame of mind, and. I, I believe that once I got them, I wanted the ball because I believed I could make a difference in a play, in a series, and in a game. And so in every situation, you know, great players, sometimes I've heard that before, that great players want the ball. And, I, and it wasn't like I was just, you know, in a selfish sense. Right. I truly believe 
that whatever battle I got into with a linebacker or, or defensive back, that I could win that battle. So, therefore, I wanted the ball. Man. And then the hit, the contact. Yeah, you know, the contact, man, you're going to get that. You know, and if you played four years of college or whatever in high school, you're used to the contact. The thing is, um, you know, the reason, I mean, the reason why I said a while ago that everybody has to step up your game, you try to find ways that, that as a player you become less interested in making that contact. So what you do is you try to find the edge on your opponent and you can beat him uh, not always through a physical confrontation, but sometimes you, you just maybe study a little bit better you, you learn his tendencies, and you can lean him one way, get him going one direction, and then you cut back the other direction. And in that way, you beat him through a finesse move. But that comes when, you, when you've been able to study the game and study that player. So it's not always about physical. But when it does get physical, you've got to make sure you've been in that weight room and you've got your body ready to take on whatever it takes to, you know, to win that battle. Right. Okay. Now, what we're going to do now, Brother Walter, we're going to have a trivia question. Now, look, I made a song about the Pittsburgh Steelers called Pittsburgh Style for Super Bowl 40. I'm going to make sure you get it through inbox or I can mail it to you. And if you get it right, okay. that's what I'm going to send you. It's a trivia question dealing with the Steelers. All right. All right. So here we go. Could you tell me the player that was drafted in 1982 by the Pittsburgh Steelers and he came from the University of Baylor. He was a running back, and his number was number 34. Could you tell me who that guy was? <laughs> that, was that was Walter Ab Sir Walter Abercrombie. Is, uh, Myron Koki nicknamed me when I got there, man. All right. You got it right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. You got any shout-outs you want to give to anybody? Hey, man, I just want to – you know, I haven't been to Pittsburgh in a long time. And uh, I just really fell in love with that city. Um, the city accepted me and, and embraced me, and, and we had some great years there. I uh, just want to say hello to all the Steelers Nation and, and, and all the fans that, that are still around that remember me back in the day. And, uh, and I haven't seen you in a long time. I miss, I miss the city. I miss being around the vibe, you know, uh, of the Steelers vibe. And, and let me tell you something, that Steelers vibe, it's it's real because when they come down here and play the Cowboys, man, it's it's on. I mean, it's a lot of black and gold in the stadium. So, hello to all the Steelers fans. I miss you guys, and uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, Reg. You're welcome, man. And uh, I appreciate you on the show as well. Now, the last question I got to ask you, Brother Walter, could you please tell me, I mean, can you tell me what's the best station, I mean, the best station in the land that pays? The MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. And there y'all have it, folks. Coming to you. Way down Texas in Waco. <laughs> Number 34, running back, Walter Abercrombie on the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. This is the MC Reggie Fresh Morning Show. A station that pays.